Hey, welcome to another tutorial from Photoshop is Fun. Now today what I want to do is I want to crack open this tool that sits within Photoshop called the Camera Raw Tool. And I want to drill down on a very specific filter called the Graduated Filter to show you how with some simple applications of these tools you can basically take a photograph that came out of the camera very lifeless and flat and um, basically give it a lot of depth and make the colors really vibrant and it's a great thing to add to your image processing workflow if you're not already using these tools um, and I guarantee that once you start to get a feel for when to um, do these applications and what type of photographs you will definitely add this to your workflow now if you shoot your photography in a raw file format you're probably already familiar with the camera raw tool to some degree because when you move raw files into Photoshop, they automatically open by default in the camera raw tool before moving into the actual Photoshop environment. If you haven't seen the camera raw tool, it's probably because you shoot in a um, file format other than raw and the most common one is JPEG. So when you move a JPEG file into Photoshop, it goes directly in and bypasses the camera raw tool altogether. So you probably haven't seen it. Okay, before we go much further, I want to show those of you who are shooting in a non-raw file format um, how to open up your JPEGs in the Camera Raw tool by default. And basically what you do is you go up to the Edit menu and you scroll down to Preferences and then you go to Camera Raw. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, um, the default setting in Photoshop is automatically open JPEGs with settings. And what you want to do is you want to switch that to automatically open all supported JPEGs. And that'll go ahead and move all of your JPEGs into the Camera Raw tool before bringing them into the normal Photoshop environment um, that you're accustomed to. So now you'll see when I go up to File and I say Open and I want to open a JPEG, it will open that JPEG in the Camera Raw tool by default. Okay, so this is the Camera Raw tool environment, and right off the bat you can see that it doesn't look nearly as sophisticated as Photoshop, and, and the truth is it's not, but at the same time do not be fooled by what you see because there's actually quite a few tools and a lot of horsepower within um, Camera Raw that you can use in your workflow. So for example, you want to use Camera Raw um, to do all your heavy lifting so things like setting your exposure and setting your white points and setting um, like your contrast and those kind of things is an excellent um, uh, thing to do in Camera Raw before you move your images into Photoshop. That said, the feature that I want to drill down in on is the graduated filter within the Camera Raw tool because it is a very powerful way to make your photographs just kind of pop. And if you're a photographer, you know that the graduated filter is used um, to make your landscape photography um, a little, ri you know, have richer colors. It makes skies more blue and not so washed out um, and things of that nature. It is a very powerful thing to do in post-processing because unlike in photography where your graduated filter sits at the end of your lens and it covers the entire photograph, in post-processing, if you use a graduated filter, what it allows you to do is target uh, selected areas of your photograph and apply the effect where you see fit and it's a nice way to add some creativity to your images okay so let's go ahead and get straight into the filter and how to use it now the first thing you want to do is you want to select graduated filter and you can see over here on the right hand side that the slider options have all changed from what they were before and I'm not going to go through each one because you're probably already, already familiar with most of them, if not all of them. But what I want to show you is how to um, use this tool within your um, photographs. Now I'm going to hold down Shift to start the gradient and um, so that it doesn't move, it stays in a straight line. And you can see the green dot at the top and the red dot at the bottom and the green dot represents the um, full gradient and down here at the bottom it's um, the transparent side so you start at 100% up here at the green and it fades down to um, 0% and you can already see right off the bat that it's added some depth to the image and that's because my exposure is um, set down to half a stop right now and you can see if I take the slider and I go even deeper that it'll add more you know it'll it'll drop my exposure and you can see the gradient effect now I'm gonna go ahead and put it at um, probably about 1.4 or negative 1.45 I think that's gonna be good for what I want 
and um, then I'm going to crank up the clarity. And if you're not familiar with the clarity slider, get yourself familiar with it because it's wonderful. It You can do um, kind of fake HDR with it with some of your photographs. But basically what clarity is, is it takes, um, when, you, when you go to the negative side down here, it takes negative values to soften the image. So it's nice for like skin tones and things like that. Or if you go to the other side, what it does is it sharpens midtones and it gives you that really um, kind of HDR and a lot of clarity in your images. You can see as I crank it up, I'm going to go ahead and just crank it up for the um, for the heck of it here, just to give you an idea how this works. And then the other thing I like to do with a lot of my photographs is I like to crank the um, contrast up quite a bit. So here I'm going to go about 35, and you can see right off the bat that. Um, the graduated filter effect is pretty nice, but it's not exactly what I want, so I'm going to actually reverse it. And I'm not holding down shift right now, um, and that allows me to kind of move it side to side and whatnot. And I'm going to go ahead and make it go this direction, because that's going to give me the effect I want in this particular image. So that's pretty nice. And the nice thing about the graduated filter is you can add more than one, and and that's where it's a lot nicer than um, you know the classic uh, photographers. Um, uh, graduated filter lens because again it allows you to target selected areas so now I'm gonna bring in another one and I'm gonna say new and I'm gonna bring this one in from the right side so that I can get a little more depth to the uh, dirt as it bleeds into the strawberry and this time though I'm going to select here so that I can move it around and I'm gonna get it a little closer something like that and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn um, uh, my exposure um, so that it, it's it's not down so many stops I'm gonna move it up to probably around one stop something like that and so that that that's starting to show you kind of how this works and and again it's a really nice way to add pop to your images so let me give you an example of the difference so um, I can turn off the graduated filters um, in the UI by clicking the show overlay checkbox and see they go away and then if I want to see the original photo I just click on the checkbox for preview to see it and right off the bat you can see that um, with the graduated filter applied it gives it a nice pop now this might be a little bit too dark for you um, but again I'm just trying to give you um, an example of what this looks like when it's applied and how you can kind of use it now the next thing I would do is move this into Photoshop and what I want to highlight is the fact that this is non-destructive that's what's fantastic about using camera raw in this type of application is it's a non-destructive way to add these effects so if I open this back up I'm gonna see it and so next what I would do is I would just open object and that'll bring it into the Photoshop environment where I can go ahead and do any um, further detail work all right, so before we wrap this up, I want to show you one more example of the graduated filter. And the reason is is because it's important to understand when to apply these tools and these applications um, and, and which photographs they work best for. And that's really how you kind of hone your skills. Now, as I said earlier, the graduated filter is typically used by photographers for landscape photography and specifically for skies because it adds a lot of um, color value and whatnot to, uh, to your images. So I'm going to go up to File and Open, and I'm going to open up one of my raw images that contains a sky. And you can see this image is kind of washed out and overexposed. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and select the graduated filter icon. And I'm going to hold down Shift so that I get a good even level pull. And I'm going to pull it down to about the horizon line. And you can see right out of the gate it... Um, makes the sky it gives a lot more depth to this guy and uh, a, a lot richer color value now this is a little more um, underexposed than I would actually do I'd probably actually just do a um, about a full stop instead of the uh, one and a half um, to get what I was looking for and then my clarity's up and again you could soften it if you wanted to if that was the effect you wanted you can see that it um, again is um, is uh, looking and in, in, in adding negative values to soften the sky but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it up because I like that effect better um, you could also um, crank the saturation to the point where you had the the blues right um, in your sky and again this just shows you what you can do with the graduated filter now if I were to add another one um, perhaps I would do so down here and um, you could see it gives a little bit of uh, depth to the um, to the water now over here, I'm going to add one more, 
and obviously that looks you know pretty ridiculous which is okay because I'm going to make some changes to it um, with this third one I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to actually crank the exposure and now I'm going to bring down the saturation quite a bit um, to get the impact that I want and I'm going to level this out a bit um, by holding down shift and something like that and then I'm going to turn off the filters themselves and again if you haven't noticed yet in my examples you can um, jump between each graduated filter that you've applied to change the settings for that particular one you can see over here that the settings change when I um, bounce from one to the other and then I'm going to um, also turn off preview just to see where we came so you can see that this is a really good start for moving my photograph into Photoshop and then touching some things up so what I would do typically probably with a photograph like this is I'd clean this up um, up here in the corners a bit and then I would also um, start bringing some focus um, to this old barn in the image and then probably um, start vignetting areas of it so that I could really draw the eye to the area of the photograph that I wanted. So in a nutshell, that's the graduated um, uh, filter. I highly recommend that you add it to your own workflow and um, start playing around with Camera Raw, and we will continue the Camera Raw series here in the future. Thanks.